Okay. So before before we, we start with the pandemic treaty inception meeting, this is going to be a very interactive meeting, if not, um, because we will be having a series of meetings. This is just the introduction for us to know what exactly we, we will be doing in the next few weeks. So today is more or less like going to be like giving you the brief of what the pandemic treaty is and what we are expecting or what the World Health Organization is expecting from our civil society and why it is so relevant for our civil society to participate in this process. So before we start with the presentation, we have in here our executive director, Prince Bull Lucini. Prince, if you can say hello. Thank you very much, Michael. Good afternoon, All everyone. Right. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, so in, in, in this session, we, I have my other colleagues uh, who, who will also be introducing themselves, if time permits. Um, I'm sure by now we, we've all selected our preferred language, so I'll just go straight to the agenda for why we are here today. So before we go into the agenda, I mean, this is civil society briefing on the World Health Organization Convention the agreement or what we call other international instrument on pandemic preparedness. So today we'll be, as I, I did, we'll be welcoming participants, which we've done that for the first 10 minutes. An introduction of special guests, uh, I guess uh, we, we have quite a number of people here. Prince is here, you've heard Prince's voice. So what I would like us to move on is the introduction of participants. You can just use the chat session to write your name and where which organization and where you are joining us from. My name is Michael Kumoji Tete and I'm the Campaigns and Communications Officer for West Africa Drug Policy Network. And today I'll be I'll be doing the honor to make a few presentations where my colleague Prince Bull Lucini would also be coming with a few um clarification and a few introduction of what exactly we are Okay, so I, I got a message that you can't hear me well. Yeah, it's, 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 can I help it a, a bit? Okay, I think I'll be doing that in the course of the presentation. All right, okay. thank you very much. Okay, okay. Okay, so from there, okay, so the purpose of the meeting, I think, would be, would be included in, um, in the presentation as we, we go on. Um, I don't know if Prince has anything to say before we kick start with the presentation because he will be coming in with a other um, um, presentation as well, if the need be. But then I don't know if Prince, you have anything to say before we start. Um, not necessarily, just to welcome everyone on behalf of West Africa Drug Policy Network and Harm Reduction International. And um, I look forward to a fruitful conversation and um, hope we have a very good recommendation at the end of the session. So, uh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Prince. So, colleagues, you can please introduce yourself in the chat session. We'll be monitoring that and then we'll mention where you are joining us from if they need be. So, after the presentation, we would have the, the chance to ask our questions and would also be able to, uh, to answer your questions. And from there, because this is going, not going to be the only session we are having, we'll be announcing the next meeting date and then the needed action that we, we have to do. And then we have the closing remarks. And also for, for us to be on the same page, if you have any question and you want to ask, kindly bear in mind that we have interpreters on the line. So you have to take your time to make sure they can hear what you have to say and also communicate to our friends who are from the Francophone um, side. Well, so this um, whole meeting that we've started is actually supported by the Harm Reduction International. Harm Reduction International is one of the um, leading harm reduction organizations in the world, which um, in Ghana here, we have the Harm Reduction Alliance which you heard Samo Hanu. Samo Hanu is actually the director for the Harm Reduction Alliance Ghana. So Harm Reduction is supporting this 
meeting that we are doing today. Now we'll be looking at what the pandemic treaty is. So just a brief introduction. In 2021, the World Health Assembly um, actually held a session to, to agree and to also have a, a way of, we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic has really not treated us, treated us fairly. And there were a lot of um, gaps that were in when the pandemic came because it was something that it was an emergency. Uh, you and I had no idea we were going to have any pandemic or any COVID in 2020, which started in 2019. But then we, we all went through it. Um, some couldn't survive it. Some of us survived it. So the World Health Organization thought it wise that they have to make some kind of treaty or make some kind of policies which would guide us in any case that we have any um, future pandemic, what are we doing? Are we ready to be able to um, survive in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the next 50 years, another pandemic that will strike again? Are we ready? So the World Health Organization thought it wise that the assembly would have to set up some kind of a special body that would be able to um, take the views of civil societies into action because we are, we are in a world where we said something for us without us is just like you doing something and drink like drink water on a duck without touching its skin. So they thought it twice that there has to be something that we have to rely on in case we have the next pandemic, which is the pandemic treaty. So the decision actually established the International Negotiation Board, Body, that is the IMB. So the IMB is responsible for the drafting of um, this instrument. So they are going to make sure that all the recommendations that we make over here are taken into consideration and make sure they draft it very well. So the first session was actually held in February and then March 2022 to actually elect the brewery officers who are going to be working on the method. And there, there is a timeline that we are going to be discussing. So now all um, World Health Assembly member states are automatically members of the International uh, Negotiating Body, that's the IMB. So it means that we all have a role to play. Now this body is actually composed of the Netherlands, South Africa, who, we, who are the coaches. Then we have Brazil, Egypt, Japan, and Thailand. So you could see that there is some kind of Africa in there. So what we are doing today is actually the Africa, uh, the West Africa edition, where we have to um, brief our members, our partners, people we work with on what the pandemic treaty is actually is. So our aim, our main uh, primary goal, so our, our aim of this meeting is actually to create awareness of the, of the process. The process has, has actually started, it's ongoing. So we have to make sure we create awareness about it. Now, creating awareness, we don't just leave it there. We have, we have to also make input into it, that is recommendations. Now, during the recommendation, we would also share experience because a lot of us, had experience during the, the pandemic. Now, the, during the pandemic, there were a lot of things that were, were missing out. So we will find a way to actually call authorities into action. Um, is it that during the COVID, there were some kind of funds that were, were given that they didn't share to us? Were there any um, marginalized people that didn't get, uh, didn't benefit from any COVID fund? We will have to make all these recommendations. Now, this recommendation will have to be tied with human rights because we all know that the basis of everything we do is human rights. So we have to look at it from the human rights perspective. So now the current plan is to actually finalize the instrument. Now, the instrument, because it's ongoing, the final date for the final draft is actually May 2024. So in the course of presentation, I'll be giving out the timeline and then what is happening when, and then we we'll all follow from there. 
So now this, the INB session is actually open to all member states. Plus um, UN, we know UN cover a lot of um, organizations. So it's actually cover all UN states. Even non-state actors are also um, in official, who are in official relations with who can also take part in, in it. So we are looking at who would the pandemic treaty be developed? How would the pandemic treaty be developed? So this is how it's going to be developed. Now, as I mentioned, there, there will be key meetings where IND will be discussing and agree upon um, sub substantive elements of the treaty, the modalities of participation of other stakeholders, and then the kind of instrument that will be negotiated. So later sessions there will be dedicated to negotiating the text of the instrument. I mean, decisions will be, will, will be taken uh, by sanctions. It's not going to be a one-man um, decision or just a few group decisions. So that's the main reason why West Africa Drug Policy Network is actually held, uh, holding this meeting for us to have a say in the treaty. Now, still on the how would the pandemic treaty be developed? Now, the INB subgroups, uh, as I mentioned, made up of uh, member states, are responsible for discussing specific topics or what we call the element of the instrument. I mean, uh, this have not been set up yet, but uh, throughout our discussion, that would be set up. Now, regional committees made up of member states are also um, part of how the pandemic treaty will be developed. Now, public hearings, as I mentioned, are ongoing. There, there has been a lot of public hearings in 2022, and this 2023 too, um, it's still ongoing. Now, we come to why is this process relevant to us civil society and communities? Now, we all know that civil society and communities will play a critical role in ensuring effective and humane COVID-19 pandemic. Likewise, what we've been doing um, with the drug policy and a few other things. Now, this role in the pandemic prevention, preparedness and response in both health responses and marginally should be safeguarded and then strengthened. So because we have to strengthen the pandemic treaty or the pandemic responses, that is why it is relevant for us civil society to take part in this drafting. Now, we, we know that already vulnerable and then marginalized uh, people, um, I mean, criminalization of communities, including migrant workers, people who use drugs, people, uh, sex workers, people living with HIV, persons with disability, or have been kind of like affected by the COVID-19 responses, which in many cases featured misuse of emergency executive powers and then the, that of the health responses. I mean, our meaningful involvement in the process is key to avoid shortcomings. So once we are able to take part in this drafting, we'll make sure that uh, shortcomings are not going to be, or we are not going to wait for anything to happen before the, the, we, we make inputs. We have to make the input now. Now this, um, requires um, allowing but then before that everyone because everyone has the, the right to take part in the formulation of the policy at the international and regional levels this right to participate um, in international forum granted in international human rights law are all something that we have to look at which is guided by the un um, guidance of guidance by the united nations office of high commission for human rights so as i mentioned earlier that all this draft that we will be doing would have to be looked out from the perspective of human rights. So what does this require? This require that the, the, we have to allow proactive and proactive, proactively encouraging meaningful um, participation of stakeholders, stakeholders like the civil society, 
and then other communities. And so we are looking at communities that will be affected by this. So as I mentioned earlier on, we also be looking at how were some of the fund, funding spent. That's the, we look at the transparency and the accountability manner. Now, do we really have access to information? Now, the creation of permanent structures for the continuous participation of civil society and community actors is also encouraged that we, we do throughout um, this session. Now, this engagement as um, told by the WHO is supposed to reflect on both the expertise and diversity of civil society and communities, ensuring that civil society organizations, that is CSOs in different parts of the world are represented, and in particular, recognizing the critical importance of the right and self-representation of distinct voices of communities. Now, in, in addition, um, who is encouraging us or is urging us that we have to be clear on the mechanisms for which we have to engage in broader constituencies with adequate resourcing to effective. So in the process, just as Harm Reduction International is supporting this session for us to create awareness on what the pandemic treaty is and what is required of um, civil society to take part in the in the session. Um, who and then its partners would also be um, be sponsoring some of the organization or other organizations to also make sure that there is effective convening and then facilitate the participation of community and civil society voices, as I mentioned earlier on. So at this point, um, please, if anyone has a question or any clarification be before I move on to the timeline for the drafting, you can please raise your hand or can you let me know so that I give you the opportunity. Okay, so in the in the absence of any comment, but I hope if we get to the questions and answers, you will be able to ask your questions. Um, so from here, we move to the timeline. Now, the timeline, which I mentioned, has already started. So we'll just be looking at the timeline for this 2023. Now, executive board session, which is the 152 or 52nd session, will take place this January, which has already begun. The session is already ongoing. Now, from there, in February 22nd and February, February 20th and February 22nd, that is when the INB will be holding the fourth meeting. Because they've already held the first, second, third, February will be the fourth meeting. And some of the deliverables are actually considering of um, a working draft based on progress achieved. So based on some of our recommendations, the IMB will be looking at, at that based on the progress that we've made. And also establishment of drafting group. So they would also look at other groups that could help in the, in the process in February. Now, from March to April 2023, there will be an ad hoc meetings. Now, the ad hoc meetings would look at deliverables like progress towards a consensus text on an instrument. Then on April 3rd to 5th, the INB will be holding its fifth meeting. So in the course of all this, we'll be sharing some of the links to um, the meetings. If you've been following our social media keenly, um, you realize that some of the things, we, we have been sharing some of the things over there and also retweeting the ones that are possible. Then from there, we move to We move to the 
seventh and then the sixth uh, 76 world assembly health um meeting so in may 2023 there is going to be an event by the world assembly world health assembly then in june 2023 there's going to be an ad hoc meeting that's the continuation of the drafting groups now these deliverables would also be looking at progress towards the consensus text of an instrument and then um, from 30th october to 1st november we would also be having the set that's when the set imb meeting will be happening will be happening now at that meeting they'll be looking at the review of works that we've we have done at our end and then other organization as i mentioned um west africa drug policy network is not the only organization who is um looking at the drafting of um, this treaty other organizations from asia from south africa from east africa are also looking at um convening the message to its members to have a draft now from 4th december to 6th there's also going there's going to be another inb meetings then in 2024 there's going to be a um, second week marathon it means that we are ending uh, entering into the year that the draft would have to be be ready so in in conclusion um, the reason we are actually having this session today is to make sure that there is a full and meaningful participation of civil society and communities at the early stage of um, the drafting so that throughout the process there, there may be essentials that will ensure that human rights based approach are, are considered and well drafted so um after prince has added his voice um, we would also be telling you the next stage and then what is required of us to to do thank you very much and if there is any questions kindly let me know thank you Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you much, Michael. Um, I think another thing also as a team who need to learn, um, I've, I've read a lot of treaties, or very few of them are, have binding provisions. I think with the pandemic treaty, they've intended to make some of the provisions binding on states. So for me, I think it's actually a good document and we should um, find a way to make our contributions. I'm making these recommendations and we'll submit them and follow up through to ensure that in a way they are captured. Thank you very much, Michael. That was a good presentation. All right, thank you very much, Prince. Um, so colleagues, the stage we are now is actually questions and answers or any clarification on the pandemic treaty. If you still have um, any question, kindly let us know, please. You can as well use the chat session to, to um, ask your questions. So in the chat session, I've um, leave an email, um, a link, sorry, a link over there. So it for those those of us who were not able to register, kindly use the link to um, send us your email so that we can send you the necessary document that we will be looking at throughout the week. For those who have registered, um, there's no need for you to um, send us your email again because we have it at our end. Okay, colleagues, so if you have any questions, please, the floor, the floor is open. Hello. Yeah, hello, Mr. Roman. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. I wanted to find out if you have a draft copy of the document, or we are just beginning at fresh. So that right, thank uh, you. one will look at it and then make inputs. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Um, 
Hello, Prince. Okay, so um, just yes, so, to answer... Yes, so, Michael. Yes, so... Okay. Um, I don't know which document is that, but I guess it's the treaty itself, right? So, uh, yes, I'm sure... Yeah, yeah. So there is none at the moment. I think what they are doing is setting the uh, some prerequisites. So there's this zero draft, which I think Michael probably could share that they've done so far. And that is to set <clears throat> the, it's, it's more of an outline kind of what is expected to be in the treaty, how it should be conducted and all of that who should participate, how people should participate, and, and that kind of thing. So the, the document doesn't exist right now. So we are trying to put the document together. Yes, OK. So just to add up to what Prince said, so after this meeting, we are going to send another email with um, a few documents that we have to look at, just as Prince mentioned, like the zero and draft and also some of the 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 tools that will guide us in making sure we have um, um a well drafted document so i mean there's no document at the moment for us to actually make any input we just have to be guided with um the drafts of um, some of the tools that will be helping us so the, the email will be sent for us to look at it and then also make our recommendations via the link that we'll be sharing. Then we, we, we at the uh, West Africa Drug Policy Network will be gathering all the recommendations and then um, in, the, in the subsequent weeks, put a well-drafted document. And in our next um, session, because we'll be looking at some of the recommendations that have come from your end, and then we'll be discussing them, which one we should include and which one we think should be taken out. In the sub, so we'll be having different different sessions to actually have a discussion on, on, on it. This is not going to be the, the first. This is actually to give a fair idea of what the pandemic treaty is and then what we'll be looking at in the future. I hope um, the answer is well. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, colleagues, um, if you have any questions or any clarification that you, you would want us to do, kindly let us know. Okay, so in, in the absence of that, um, I think I will be sharing another um, document, which is um, the human rights principles on um, some, some of the things that would have to be looked out when um, drafting the when gathering our recommendations. Okay, I hope you all can see my screen. Yeah. Okay, so th this is um, some of the, the key things that would have to be looked out when drafting um, the, the, the treaty. So this one is the human rights principles for the pandemic treaty. So looking at the consultation and participation. So the pandemic treaty has um, been mentioned, is said to be developed through a robust participatory as we are doing. So it means that all civil society activists has to be, be part of it, looking at the consultation and then uh, participation for full, equal, meaningful, and then effective participation. Now, the pandemic treaty itself should also provide for procedures or on decision making and implementation of national and transnational measures for pandemic preparedness and response that are still allow for equal, meaningful, and effective participation. So when we are looking at the consultation and participation, this is what we have to look out for as um, participants. Now, looking at the human rights protection, now. It is also said here that we have to look at the, we have to make sure that the treaty will be enhancing and complement and must not, and must not uh, diminish or impair the effective discharge of existing human rights obligations. So in drafting it, we have to make sure that it still 
in line with the human rights and then other instruments that are already there by the international human laws, human rights laws and then standards. Now, in terms of the health system also, we also have to look at it from a guide. It has to be guided by a multi-sectorial one health approach. Now, we also look at the treaty being a long-term, uh, entrenched a long-term and transformative investment, looking at the public health system and adequate, adequate quality, accessibility, uh, acceptability, and then availability in all communities and effective regulate private and public sector actions that impact on public health in the context of the pandemic preparedness. So when we look at the health system, this is some of the things that it has to look out for. We have to look out for. I'll be sharing this and then a few other documents for us to look at throughout our conversation. So also looking at the diagnos uh, diagnostics, medication and vaccine and Therapeutic. Now, we all we all bear in mind that um, harm reduction is also one of um, the the key point that as activists or advocates we we look out for. So, so these are some of the things that would also guide us in making sure that medication or vaccines and all those things are also considered. Now, we also look at human rights based responses to public health emergencies. Now, they also mentioned that it also has to reinstate and reinforce the international law obligation, as I mentioned earlier on, and then make sure that um, it is aimed at responding to future pandemics. Now, in general, we also look at states should not enact or implement criminal or similar uh, punitive sanctions to enforce pandemic response uh, measures. Now, when we come to equality and non-discrimination, the pandemic, the treaty would also have to reaffirm the principle of equality before the law, equal protection of the law, and prohibition of discrimination on grounds and prohib prohibited by international laws and all those things. So we have to also realize that human rights of individual at greater risk of human rights violations, such as those who are already marginalized and all belong to a risk groups. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, the accountability and access to justice is also key to this pandemic treaty. So they, they also said that this has to record the international law obligation of state to ensure access to justice and effective remedies for human rights violations on abuse and require states to provide such access to justice and effective remedies in a timely manner in the context of domestic pandemic responses. Now, the list goes on and on. So we also look at the economic and social and cultural rights. So this will also have to ensure that measures for pandemic preparedness. We, we will bear in mind that uh, the way uh, we have different cultures and how we, 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 we will be able to address issues like the pandemic, we all bear in mind that when the COVID-19 came, there were a lot of remedies that were provided. Some were uh, ignoring the vaccine and then trying to get the natural medicines and all those things. So now the human rights principles for the pandemic treaty would also have to look at the economic, social, and cultural rights. Then international cooperation, that is the solidarity. The pandemic treaty also would have to incorporate the individual and collective obligations of um, um, states to engage in international cooperations and assistance and establish me measurable and objective mechanism to facilitate universal collaborative, coordinated and equitable enjoyment of human rights in pandemic preparedness and response measures including true global solidarity in global health. So in doing all these things to technology would also be looked at, but if we all know that technology also has a role to play in. So these are some of the few things that we also have to look at when um, look at recommending for a pandemic 
treaty. All right, so if anyone has still has any question, um, the floor is still open. We still have a few minutes to we end this session. So kindly let us know if you have any questions or clarification. Thank you. So um, Mamudu is asking, how does the new civil society organization just coming on board have um, in the process? What role? Um, Prince, I don't know if you, you, you'll be able to give us a few insights. Mamudu is asking, what role does, what role does new civil society organization just coming on board have in the process? Oh yeah, is to. I mean, the whole the whole essence of our gathering is actually to make recommendations, to make our inputs. Because of, <clears throat> I mean, the WHO recognizes how much role civil society plays when it comes to uh, disease prevention and control. So as an inclusive process, <clears throat> they felt they should, they should reach out to civil society and then um, obtain their contribution. So I think as, a, as, as an organization, I mean, whether you have been here or just joining us, it's, it's just so that we make our input to this document. It's an opportunity for us to make our input. I mean, there are a lot of conventions and treaties out there that we just read and see today some dated way back in the 60s, some 70s, very few in the 90s and the 20s. So this is just an opportunity. I think what we can do is make our contributions and also um, get um, stories, people, how others experienced um, um, the COVID pandemic. For example, we had... <clears throat> people who use drugs, who had to take, people who are dependent on drugs, who had uh, treatment and rehabilitation plans, those plans were distorted during lockdowns, permanent lockdowns, um, um, intermittent lockdowns. It affected their right to attaining health. So those are stories we could bring up. Those are scenarios we could look at and say, okay, now that we are having a pandemic treaty, uh, which is some portions of the treaty will be binding, I think for, as an organization, I would probably look at how COVID affected the work we do or how COVID affected our beneficiaries and then submit um, recommendations um, as being guided by what Michael just presented. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prince, for the clarification. Um, let me check if we still have any other questions in the chat. Okay. Okay, I think um, there is no further questions in the chat. So I guess um, we... I guess we, we are all on the same page. So just to remind you again, we'll be sharing the recommendation link with um, a few resources that are available for us to look at to make input. So we'll be sharing them. We have um, both French and English available of um, some of the documents and the ones that are not available also, we are going to make provision for that so that we share with all our members and all our partners or participants who are here today and those who are also not here. We know that there is a tight um, schedule. There are a lot of meetings going on. Um, so we will also be reaching out to colleagues. And then um, those who are also here would also um, plead with you to share with your colleagues who were not able to join so that we can all have um, an equal voice because this pandemic treaty is actually something that we have to make inputs now. Um, it shouldn't be that we would the, the treaty will be will be done 
which a lot of treaties has been done and yet um, countries are not following it. But I mean, this initiative supported by the Harm Reduction International, uh, we, hope, we hope that um, we all make a meaningful in, uh, input and then we will bring our ideas on board for us to have a world prepared and drafted um, pandemic treaty that would guide us in the today, tomorrow, and in the future as well. Okay, so I guess there is no other question. So, um, we 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 have ended the. I think we've ended the questions and answers. Let me see if there's another. Okay, so um, Mamudu is asking if it's possible for us to create a WhatsApp group for um, easy communication. Uh, well, why not? Um, we we I don't know if we are on the general WhatsApp group, Mahmoud. But then, why not? If it's possible for us to create a WhatsApp group for easy sharing of um, the link for us to make input. Yes, we'll make that. And then the secretariat is also going to make sure that we, we send WhatsApp messages to each and everyone with a link. Um, okay, I, I guess I lost my other connection. Um, it's, it's connecting. So for, for us to be on the same page, we, we will be having a series of meetings. So our next meeting will be in February. Um, we'll be communicating the date, the time, and what we will be needing before the, 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 the next meeting. So that is that. And then in March also, so in February, we'll be having two sessions. And in, in March, we'll be having another session to also have to have a discussion on the recommendation that has been sent to us here. And then there will be another session also to agree on um, the recommendations that has been, been sent to us and drafted before we uh, make a presentation to um, 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 WAHU, that is the West Africa Health Organization. So in, in, in making in drafting this treaty, we are also considering in making a presentation at the West Africa Health Organization um, in Burkina Faso, which is the, the, the mother body in, in charge of uh, with the West Africa health issues. Just like the World Health Organization is in charge of the whole, the whole world, we have the African uh, health organizations also who is, who is in charge of all Africa. So in West Africa, we have the WAHU, that is the West Africa health organizations that will be making a presentation to. So in the subsequent week or in the subsequent days, we will be sharing the resources that we need and then the other timeline that we will have to be joining. So in the absence of any other questions or any other um, clarification, I would want um, Prince to give us a closing remark if Prince you have anything to say. Thank you. Um, nothing much to say, Michael. Thank you very much. And I also want to thank our participants um, for taking this time to join with us. We also want to thank uh, Harm Reduction International for the initiative and giving us the opportunity to reach out to our members. Um, I also think for those of us who are already um, on the, the call could also share some of the links with our staff members and some of our network members and other people that we know in the health sector who may not necessarily be um, here because it's, it's not just about the input, but also getting people aware that um, because of the COVID, um, WHO has resolved or resulted in actually setting up a pandemic. So we want to raise that awareness as, as, as widely as possible. So I want to crave the indulgence of all of us who may be here, probably to share the flyers and to take the news around and, and, and let people be aware that such a document is being developed 
and um, they have the space to make a contribution. Once again, thank you very much, and I hope to see all of us again in our next session. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Prince. Thank you very much. And um, thank you, colleagues. We will we'll be. The few resources that you will need available in the next few days. So kindly be checking your email for the necessary resources and then the, the link to for further actions.